Environmental Science Journal for Kids presents Can Shipwrecks Help Protect Ocean Creatures? Read by Maria Fernanda Vega Abstract What do you think of when you think of shipwrecks? Pirates? Lost treasure? Cute decorations for an aquarium? For sea animals, a shipwreck can also be a safe hiding place. When a ship sinks, ocean life quickly takes over. Animals like corals and anemones look for hard surfaces to cling to. Fish find places to hide. So could shipwrecks also protect animals from fishing nets? Bottom-toed fishing pulls nets behind the boats. When those nets drag along the seafloor, they can damage habitat. Shipwrecks snag and damage nets, so fishing boats avoid them. We wonder whether shipwrecks act like miniature refuges for ocean animals. We studied five shipwrecks near the coast of Scotland and Northeast England. Some of these wrecks are in protected areas, and some are in places with a lot of fishing. We found that ocean life is more abundant near shipwrecks where there are lots of fishing boats. Introduction Fishing is important. Millions of people rely on the ocean for their food. There is a long tradition of gathering food and resources from the sea. But many modern fishing methods harm the ocean environment. Many places have become overfished. People used to think that bottom toed fishing, trawling, didn't harm the environment. But we now know that that was wrong. Filter feeders like anemones and dead man's fingers anchor themselves to rocks. They need to be above the mud and sand of the seafloor so they can find things to eat. Bottom-toed fishing disturbs these animals, stirring up lots of mud and sand and making it hard for them to find food. It can take many years for seafloor habitats to recover. Marine protected areas do not allow some kinds of fishing practices but only a few marine protected areas are fully close to bottom-toed fishing. Even in those places, the seafloor was most likely trawled sometime in the past. There are very few truly undisturbed places. Bottom-toed fishers will fish most parts of the ocean where they won't rip their nets or damage their fishing gear. Shipwrecks are a common underwater hazard. They're made of out of hard materials like wood and metal. A huge variety of sea life gathers around shipwrecks. They often are covered in coral and they give fish a place to hide. Could shipwrecks act like miniature refuges for ocean life? That's what we wanted to discover. A shipwreck can turn into an artificial reef. Shipwrecks in shallow water often get taken over by ocean life. Methods We investigated five shipwrecks near the southeast coast of Scotland. All of the ships sank at least 100 years ago. Three of the shipwrecks are in places where trawling is allowed. The other two are in a marine protected area where no trawling is allowed. We wanted to know, are shipwrecks home to a richer variety of sea life? Do they have more sea creatures than other places? Are they refuges for organisms in places where there's a lot of fishing? To answer these questions, a team of scuba divers took video cameras into the water. They swam in straight lines, called transects, near the seafloor. We planned controlled transects 200 meters away from the ship. Figure 1 shows how the divers took videos as they swam along straight lines called transects that were 50 meters long. The controlled transects were far from the wreck. We investigated the area within 50 meters of the ship 
as well as the shipwreck itself. We wrote down all the animals and plants that we could see in the videos. We calculated abundance by counting the number of organisms in each one meter by one meter square. Results. We found lots of living things near the shipwrecks. We found 49 different species living on or near the shipwrecks. We counted 469 squat lobsters, 335 urchins, 495 starfish, and many other interesting organisms. The controlled transect areas had just as many different species as the shipwrecks did, but there were big differences in specific species between places open to trawling and places close to trawling. Soft-bodied large filter feeders, for example soft corals, are one of the most vulnerable species. There were almost none in the control sites. We found that shipwrecks matter a lot in places where bottom trawling is allowed. We found over three times as many organisms on or near the shipwrecks than we found at the controlled transects. In figure two, you can see how we calculated the average number of organisms per square meter for closed sites and for open sites. The control transect represents the environment away from the wreck. Where do you see the biggest difference between the closed sites and the open sites? But what about the sites close to bottom toad fishing? We actually saw more organisms at the control sites than near the shipwrecks. All in all, our results show that shipwrecks are very important refuges in places with a lot of fishing. Discussion. Some of the shipwrecks we studied are very old. That means that there hasn't been bottom trawling at those sites for a long time. So the environment at these sites has had time to recover. Shipwrecks help the environment in some ways but they can harm it in others. Our study showed that shipwrecks are especially important where there's a lot of fishing. Shipwrecks make it possible for ocean life to be more abundant, but we aren't saying there should be more shipwrecks as they can also pollute the environment. If a ship was powered by an engine, it probably had a lot of fuel and oil in it when it sank. Those chemicals can leak out into the water. Instead, our data shows that protecting an area from bottom toad fishing can have big benefits. We think there should be more places that are protected from bottom trolling. That would help more ocean animals to survive and even flourish. Conclusion. Healthy oceans are important. A healthy ocean has lots of different kinds of plants and animals. Many human activities can damage ocean health. Trash and other pollutants can wash into rivers and end up in the ocean. That's one reason why we should never litter. Fishing boats can overfish and can damage seafloor habitats. By being thoughtful about when and where fishing is allowed to happen, local governments can make sure that oceans stay healthy. Fish and other seafood caught using environmentally friendly methods is called sustainable seafood. You can help ocean habitats by encouraging your family to buy sustainable seafood. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the Wiley Online Library published in November 2023. Research conducted by Jenny Hickman Joel Richards, and others. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.